fix the car. She got into her car. She hoped it would start. Twice in the past month, the car had not started when she turned the key. It had started the second time she turned the key, but that made her nervous. Sooner or later, she might have to turn the key three times, then four times. She had called her mechanic. He said to bring the car in when she had time. When was that, she wondered. She worked two jobs. She was a clerk at a clothing store. She spent five days a week folding clothes or hanging them up on hangers. People who tried on clothes usually left them on the floor in the dressing room. They rarely folded them or hung them back up on the hangers. The store was only fifteen minutes from her apartment and parking was free. Also, she worked four nights a week at a restaurant. She was a waitress. She made good money from her tips. Usually the customers were friendly and interesting. She liked her waitress job, but it was a thirty-minute drive from her apartment. The restaurant closed at 10 p.m. She did not want to be stuck in the parking lot late at night if her car didn't start. Her mechanic wasn't open on weekends. She decided to ask her boss to give her a day off from the clothing store. Then she could still drive to the restaurant that night after her car was fixed. She would miss only one day of work. A thief on the sidewalk. She looked at the man walking along the sidewalk next to the nice houses. He didn't live in any of those houses. She had seen this man several times before. He looked like a criminal. She knew not to judge a book by its cover, but this man was no good. She drove by him. He looked at her car as she drove by. She continued driving. She watched him in her rearview mirror. She got to the corner and stopped. She continued to watch him walking in her direction. Suddenly he turned left up a driveway. A red SUV was parked in the driveway right next to the sidewalk. She saw him walk up to the driver's door. He returned to the sidewalk and continued walking in her direction. What was that all about, she wondered. Then she realized that he had tested the door to see if it was locked. He is a criminal, she thought. That's what he does. He just walks through our neighborhoods looking for cars to break into. She called the police. She described him. The officer said he knew who the man was. Residents called two or three times a week to report him walking by. But the police couldn't arrest him for walking around. They had to catch him with stolen goods. But he was testing that SUV door to see if it was unlocked, she said. I'm sorry, said the officer. That's not against the law. If you see him actually steal something, give us a call. School Fight One day at school, Harry pushed Scott. Scott pushed Harry back. Harry punched Scott in the face. Scott went home with a bruise on his face. He had a red bruise on his face. His mom said, Who did this to you? Who hit you? His dad asked, Did you hit him back? I hope you hit him back. Don't be a chicken. You must not be a chicken. Scott said he had pushed Harry back. His dad told him to punch Harry next time. Scott went to school the next day. 
Harry pushed him to the floor. Scott got up and punched Harry in the face. Harry fell down. His nose was bleeding. A teacher walked by. He picked up Harry off the floor. The teacher called Scott's dad. Scott punched Harry, he said. Harry's nose is bleeding. Scott's dad said, That's my boy. Halloween It was Halloween, the last day of October. It was October 31st. Halloween was Freddy's favorite day. He liked Halloween better than Christmas. He liked Halloween better than his birthday. Halloween was dress-up day. Halloween was costume day. Halloween was Superman day. On Halloween, Freddy was Superman. Every Halloween, Freddy wore a Superman costume. He wore his red boots. He wore his blue pants. He wore his yellow belt. He wore his red cape. He wore his blue shirt. His blue shirt had a big red S on it. The S was for Superman. Superman was Freddy's hero. Superman was strong. Superman could pick up a train. Superman could pick up a house. Superman could pick up a ship. Freddy loved his costume. He wore his Superman costume every Halloween. Everyone said, Hello, Superman, to him. He said hello to everyone. People gave Superman lots of candy. The Tomato The emergency number is 911. The emergency number is for emergencies. An emergency is a fire. An emergency is a crime. An emergency is an accident. Steve dialed 911. What is your emergency? asked the dispatcher. They put a tomato on my hamburger, said Steve. Excuse me? said the dispatcher. They put a tomato on my hamburger. I hate tomatoes. I told them no tomatoes. The dispatcher said, Sir, a tomato is not an emergency. The dispatcher hung up. Steve dialed 911 again. What is your emergency? asked the same dispatcher. They put a tomato on my hamburger. I hate tomatoes, Steve said. The dispatcher asked, Where are you? I will send the police. Steve said he was at Burger King. The police arrived at Burger King. They put Steve in the back of their police car. They took him to jail. Dinner Chores Annie, set the table, please, said Mom. It's time for dinner. Annie said it wasn't her week to set the table. It was her week to clear the table. She said it was Lisa's week to set the table. Lisa was in the living room. Lisa was playing with the dog in the living room. Lisa was having fun with the dog. Lisa, Mom said, Come here and set the table. It's dinner time. Lisa said it wasn't her week to set the table. It was Mark's week to set the table. It was Lisa's week to feed the dog. Where is Mark? Mom asked. Lisa said he's riding his bike. Mark was outside riding his bike. Mom asked Annie, Do you want extra dessert tonight? Annie said, yes. What do I have to do? She asked. Her mom said all she had to do was set the table. He loves his country. 
I don't like John, she told her husband. Why don't you like John, he asked his wife. She said that John said bad things about Americans. He said Americans are lazy. He said Americans are greedy. He said Americans are selfish. He said Americans are unfriendly. John said the people in his country aren't lazy. The people in his country aren't greedy. The people in his country aren't selfish. The people in his country aren't unfriendly. But John is new here, said her husband. He doesn't know anyone yet. He doesn't have any friends. When he has new friends, he will change his mind. He will say different things. He will say good things about Americans. He told his wife to be patient. She didn't want to be patient. A new person shouldn't say bad things, she said. He should go back to his country. Forever Single No one will ever marry me, said Paula. Of course someone will marry you, said her sister Joan. Paula said she wasn't pretty. A man wants to marry a pretty woman. I think you're pretty. Some man will marry you. Look at Mama, said Joan. Mama is not a pretty woman. Daddy married Mama. So someone will marry you. Of course someone will marry you. Paula did not think so. She was thirty years old. She was not married. She didn't have a boyfriend. Her last boyfriend was ten years ago. She didn't go out on dates. No man ever asked her out on a date. I can't even get a date, she said. How can I get married if I can't even get a date? Joan told her to stop worrying. She would find a man when she stopped worrying about finding a man. The Paint Job Danny's fence needed painting. He wanted to paint it white. He looked in the phone book. He looked under P for painters. He called up a painter. How much to paint my fence? he asked. How big is your fence? the painter asked. It goes all the way around my yard, Danny said. How big is your yard? the painter asked. My yard is half as big as a football field, Danny said. The painter said, three hundred dollars. It will cost three hundred dollars, he said. That was a good deal. Danny said, that's a good deal. The painter came over the next day. He painted Danny's fence white. It took him only three hours. Danny looked at his white fence. He liked it. You did a good job, he said to the painter. My white fence looks great. How long will this paint last? It will last a lifetime, said the painter. Walk the dog. Tommy, the dog is scratching at the door, his mom yelled. Take him for a walk. Make sure you take a plastic bag with you. Tommy said he didn't hear the dog scratching. He said the dog did not need to go for a walk. He said there were no plastic bags in the house. His mom said, Take the dog for a walk right now, please. Tommy got the dog leash, a plastic bag, and a little plastic shovel. How can I finish my homework when I have to walk the dog? he asked his mom. You can finish your homework when you get back, his mom said. He put the leash around the dog's neck and walked outside. It was cold outside. The dog walked to a tree. It pooped. 
Tommy put the poop into the plastic bag. Yuck, he said. This is worse than doing homework. A barking dog. The lady's dog barked too much. It barked in the morning. It barked in the afternoon. It barked at night. Every time Kevin walked past the front door, the dog barked. Every time Kevin walked past the back door, the dog barked. Every time anybody walked past, the dog barked. He told the landlord, That lady's dog barks too much, he said. The landlord said he would talk to the lady, but he never did. Kevin wanted to shut the dog up. It was a little dog, but it had a big mouth. The dog's mouth was bigger than the dog. What could Kevin do? One day he yelled at the dog. He yelled, Shut up, you stupid dog! The dog barked at Kevin. The lady got angry. She yelled at Kevin. Sugar is not stupid. Don't call sugar stupid, she said. He's a lot smarter than you are. Cross the street. Jimmy wanted to cross the street. He was on the south side of the street. He wanted to get to the north side of the street. He was in the middle of the block. His father always told him to cross at an intersection. His father always said, Never cross in the middle of the block. Jimmy walked to the intersection. There was a traffic light at the intersection. It had three colors, red, green, and yellow. Red was at the top, green was at the bottom, yellow was in the middle. He looked at the crosswalk sign. It was red. It was a red hand. The red hand meant, don't walk. He waited for the red hand to change. It changed to a white figure walking. The white figure walking meant, walk. Jimmy looked both ways. Then he walked across the street. He walked in the crosswalk. The World Map Jerry was looking at a map. It was a map of the world. The map showed many countries. It showed all the countries in the world. All the countries were different colors. There were red countries, green countries, and blue countries. Jerry pointed at one country. Daddy, why is this country red? Is it on fire? Did someone paint the ground red? Does it have a lot of tomatoes? Jerry pointed at another country. It was a green country. Daddy, why is this country green? Does it have a lot of grass? Did someone paint the ground green? Jerry pointed at another country. It was a blue country. Daddy, why is this country blue? Is it full of blue water? Does it have a lot of bluebirds? Did someone paint the ground blue? His daddy said, No, the colors make the map pretty. They don't mean anything. Drive the car. Charlie wanted to drive the car. Can I drive the car, Dad? he asked. You can drive the car, his dad said. Charlie followed his dad out to the car. His dad opened the driver's door. You are the driver, he said. Charlie got into the car. 
His dad closed the driver's door. His dad walked around the car. He opened the passenger door. He sat next to Charlie. He gave Charlie the key. Charlie put the key into the ignition. Charlie turned the key. The car started. Charlie was so excited. He turned the steering wheel left. He turned the steering wheel right. Left, right, left, right. He honked the horn. He honked the horn again. Honk, honk. He turned on the left blinker. He turned on the right blinker. Blink, blink. He asked, Am I a good driver, Dad? His dad said, Son, you're a very good driver. Visit the ocean. Dad took Beth to the ocean. This was her first visit to the ocean. This was her first visit to the beach. This was the first time she saw the sandy beach. She loved the sand. She dug holes in the sand. She filled up the holes. She held the sand in her hands. She dropped the sand out of her hands. She picked up the sand. She threw the sand. Her dad picked her up. She held on to him. He carried her to the edge of the water. He held both her hands. He let her stand in the water. Her feet got wet. She stood in the water. She watched the water cover her feet. She bent down. She picked up some wet sand. She threw the wet sand. She sat down in the water. She dug holes in the wet sand. Dad sat down next to her. Baseball Dreams Paul loved baseball. He loved baseball more than football. He loved baseball more than basketball. His favorite team was the Yankees. He wanted to play baseball for the Yankees. He practiced baseball almost every day. He practiced throwing the baseball. He practiced catching the baseball. He practiced hitting the baseball. He practiced pitching the baseball. He slept with his baseball glove. His baseball glove was under his pillow. At night he dreamed about baseball. He dreamed about playing for the Yankees. He played on his high school team. He played on his college team. His coaches loved Paul. They said he was going to be a baseball player. Then Paul was in a car accident. It was a bad accident. Paul couldn't walk. His doctor said he would never walk again. Paul said, I will walk again. I will run again. I will play baseball for the Yankees. The Mole She had a mole on her face. She hated it. It was on her left cheek. It wasn't far from her mouth. She touched it every day. She wished that it would go away, but it didn't. It was an ugly brown bump on her cheek. It was a dark brown circle. It was about the size of a pencil eraser. Everyone could see her mole. Everyone looked at her mole. She hated her mole. Every night she scrubbed her cheek extra hard. Maybe she could scrub the mole away. Every day she pressed down on the mole with her finger. Maybe she could press the mole away. She asked her mom to cut the mole off with a razor. 
I won't cut it off with a razor, said her mom. I'm not a doctor. I'll take you to a doctor. Maybe he can cut it off with a razor. A Christmas present. What do you want for Christmas? Daddy asked Anthony. Anthony wanted a little brother. Can I have a little brother for Christmas? Anthony asked. Well, I'll have to talk to your mother, said Daddy. Why do you have to talk to Mommy? Anthony asked. Who's going to change the diapers? Daddy asked. You're right, Daddy. We need Mommy to change the diapers. Mommy walked into the room. Anthony told Mommy that he wanted a little brother for Christmas. Mommy said, Well, I'll have to talk to your father. Why do you have to talk to Daddy? Anthony asked. Who's going to pay the doctor? asked Mommy. You're right, Mommy. We need Daddy to pay the doctor. Mommy and Daddy walked out of the room. A little later, they came back into the room. Mommy said, You can't have a little brother for Christmas, but if you can wait, you can have a little brother in April. Who sits in the front? The boys were going to the beach. Dad was going to drive them to the beach. The drive to the beach would take an hour. Dave and Dick loved the beach. They also loved the drive to the beach. They loved to look out the window. They loved to stick their heads and arms out the window and feel the breeze. They also loved to be in the front seat. They both preferred the front seat. They both hated the back seat. Let's go, boys, Dad said. Let's go to the beach. Both boys ran out of the house. They ran straight to the front door of the car. Dave got there first. Dick got there second. Dave pulled the door open. Dick fell to the ground. Dave got into the front seat and shut the door. Guess what? You can sit in the back seat, he said to Dick. Go to the park. Chuck wanted to go to the park after dinner. His mom wanted him to stay home after dinner. She didn't want him to go to the park. She said it was dark at the park. But Chuck said it wasn't dark at the park. There are lights at the park, Mom, he said. But she said there were only a few lights at the park. She said there were many dark places in the park. Bad people go to the park at night, she said. Bad people do bad things. They do bad things to good people. You are a good person. I don't want something bad to happen to you. Chuck said, Nothing bad will happen to me. I will go with my two friends. We will be together. All three of us will be together. We will stay away from the dark places. We will stay under the lights. The Birthday Cake It was Jenny's fourth birthday. She was four years old. Her mom baked a cake for her. Her mom baked a chocolate cake for her. The cake had two layers. Her mom put vanilla frosting on the bottom layer. Her mom put vanilla frosting on the top layer. Her mom put vanilla frosting all around the cake. Now the chocolate cake was completely white. Her mom put four pink candles 
on top of the cake. Her dad lit the four pink candles. The four pink candles were lit. Jenny's mom and dad sat down next to Jenny. They sang happy birthday to her. Happy birthday to you, they sang. Jenny sang with her mom and dad. Happy birthday to me, she sang. Her mom said, Now make a wish and blow out the candles. Jenny made a wish. Then she blew out all four pink candles. Pay the interest. Jake and Larry are brothers. They used to be friends. They used to talk to each other. But now they aren't friends. Now they don't talk to each other. They have a problem. The problem is money. Jake had borrowed five hundred dollars from Larry. Larry had lent five hundred dollars to Jake. Jake paid Larry back. Jake paid Larry back the five hundred dollars. Larry was not happy. Larry wanted interest. He wanted fifty dollars interest. Jake said Larry had not asked for interest. Jake said, You didn't ask for interest. I won't pay you interest. Larry said he wanted ten percent interest. He said ten percent was not much. Jake said ten percent was too much. He said, You are my brother. You aren't a bank. A bank charges interest. A brother doesn't charge interest. Larry said that everyone charges interest. Friends charge interest. Parents charge interest. Sisters charge interest. Brothers charge interest. The Winner Victor never won at anything. He played Monopoly. He lost at Monopoly. He played Scrabble. He lost at Scrabble. He played Checkers. He lost at Checkers. He played Chess. He lost at Chess. He played Tennis. He lost at Tennis. His dad told him not to worry. Someone has to win and someone has to lose, Dad said. But I'm always the loser, Victor said. I'm never the winner. His dad said, Don't worry. These are games. You are playing games. Games are not important. Victor asked, What is important? I thought games are important. His dad said that being a good person is important. He said the most important thing is to be a good person. He said that Victor was a good person. Victor was kind. Victor was polite. Victor was friendly. Thank you, Dad, Victor said. I am a good person, so I am a winner. <laughs>